What's up guys, Senator Lifestyle, we're gonna talk all about vehicle weight. I've been lucky enough to borrow some scales and there's been a ton of speculation online. So today we're gonna get some real world data and figure out exactly what my wheeler weighs. Two off-road secrets that I think people don't take serious enough is low tire pressure and low vehicle weight. These might seem like they're in two different realms, but believe it or not, they are definitely directly correlated. Whenever you lower the pressure of your tire, it makes it where it spreads out your contact patch and it gives you more flotation. It's actually physically lightening the footprint of your vehicle because it's making the footprint larger. So your vehicle weight stays the same, but because your footprint grows, it's less pressure um, per square inch, if that makes sense. This allows you to float over the obstacles much easier now, if you lower the vehicle weight, it's a really similar concept. You're reducing the amount of pressure per square inch, which sounds like you're losing traction, but we'll get to traction here in a second. But the reality is that whenever you can lighten the footprint of the vehicle, it goes up and over obstacles much easier. When you have a lightweight 4x4, you get what appears to be better traction. This is caused by the fact that it's easier to push and pull an off-road rig over obstacles when it's light. Does a lightweight vehicle get more traction? This is a big question. It depends on how you define traction. If traction is defined by the amount of force that is created from vehicle weight being pressed down onto the surface, then a lighter vehicle is not getting better traction. But if traction is defined by a vehicle's ability to make forward progress, then hell yeah, a lighter vehicle gets better traction. I've put a lot of time and energy into trying to keep my Jeep as light as I can while also making it very capable off-road. So it has 40 inch tall tires and it's hard to make a vehicle on 40s light, but I've done everything I can with aluminum doors, aluminum fenders, a whole bunch of different components like that. My buddy Kelly is gonna bring his Jeep over today. We're gonna put them both on scales because he has a Jeep on 40s, it's a TJ, and he has a whole bunch of steel all over his rig. So, we're gonna just do a friendly comparison and see what we find. We, we both are gonna guess what the vehicles weigh and then we're gonna go look at the real world numbers and you're gonna see some genuine reactions and genuine responses to what we find. This is my friend Kelly with Muddy Beards. What's up guys? He's uh, got another YouTube channel and I invited him over here so we could get some corner weights and then we're gonna add these corner weights up and get a full solid idea of exactly how much our vehicles weigh. The internet's full of speculation of course we are going to be writing down our findings right here. Uh, we're basically gonna use our head and we're gonna think up how much we think each of our vehicles weigh. We're gonna put it in the estimated column. So Kelly, Nate, estimated. Then we're gonna write down the corner weights because that's how these scales work. And then we'll have an actual total. So the best way to, oh, we had a light die. That's nah, okay. <laughs> so the best way to start would be estimations. How much do you think yours weighs, Kelly? Um. Um, you, so my guess, I did some math, because uh -huh. I know how much my tires weigh, because I've weighed those before individually, and let's just say they are very heavy. Uh, so I'm guessing mine is 4,500 pounds. 45? Yeah, that's my guess on mine. All right, you want to write it down? Sure. You can write down 45. Here's a red marker, sir. Then how much do you think mine weighs? 39 is what I'm guessing yours. You think, oh, man, I'd be so impressed if it was less than <laughs> yeah, four. <laughs> it's, I'm, it's around four is my guess, but like. Well, put whatever your guess is. We're going to see. I'm going to go 39. I'm going to go low. All right. Now, me. <clears throat> Let's see here. I think mine is going to weigh 4,600 pounds. And I think Kelly is gonna weigh 5,200 pounds. Ooh. Ooh. Although, I don't know, I, I estimate that because I have a bigger transfer case, so we both have like, you know, aftermarket tube fenders, all this different stuff. We both have five 40 inch tall tires. We both are on bead locks. But the difference is all those parts on mine are aluminum. All of them on his are steel. So he's got steel fenders, um, steel doors, Steel bead locks, all this stuff is steel, whereas mine is all aluminum. So, you know, we both have our half doors on right now. And to make things fair, we decided to remove all of our tools because we want this to be as close and uh, as consistent as possible, as, at least as much as we can make it. But each of us have five tires. <laughs> um, I removed my tire carrier specifically to lose weight. Um, I've done everything I can to cheat weight out of this, and I do have plans to lower it more in the future, um, but it's gonna get it's gonna get hard to lose weight now. So I am thinking that we're gonna be, because of the transfer case difference, you still have the stock TJ transfer case, which is not very big, and I have the gigantic four-speed Atlas. I think we're gonna be like 300 pounds, no, 400 pounds different, so I think. You want me to write yours down? Please? Yes, please. I think that you are gonna weigh 
5,200, and I think I'm going to weigh 4,800. That's what my numbers are. So yeah, we are almost like 800 pounds difference on each. Or our, our spacing, spacing is... Spacing is a lot. Uh, it's yeah. A lot of difference between yeah, you're guessing a 600 pound difference and I'm guessing a 400 pound difference. There we go. Ah, you hit the brake a little too hard. You're not on the rear. That, that'll work. Okay, so um, I'll, if, I'll call it out if you want to write them on there. So corner one, we'll do, uh, dri we'll start on the driver's side, we'll go all the way around and go to the passenger side. So driver's side front. Corner one, 1180. Corner two, 1160. Corner three, 1260. And corner four is 1100. Zero, zero. 47. That's actually pretty really close. You are super close, <laughs> Kelly. That was a great guess. Well, you actually did math. <laughs> oh, yeah, I actually did math on the phone. I was adding up because each wheel and tire weigh 156 pounds. So just the five tires is almost 800 pounds. It's like 760 or 780 or something like that. Yeah, for just five. For five tires. Yeah, yeah, just for five. Four, no, no, no. You said no. I, I was five. thinking four. Be right with That's five. A lot. It's a lot, dude. All right, interesting. Well, yep. let's uh, back it off, and then we will uh, we'll, we'll pull mine up. Okay, um, check. I think we're good. We are at 1280. We are at 1000. 1000. And 1260. 4540. We're both lightweight, and you are way lighter weight than I would have thought. Yeah, I'd... I'm definitely surprised on that number as well, for that, sure. That is crazy. That is crazy. Well, it makes you wonder. So the, the this math, the, the make going through this math is very interesting because the fact that my front corners weigh more than your front corners is bizarre. That is weird. How could that even be possible? Kelly and I have been discussing this, trying to figure out where all this extra weight comes from, and we started to notice a whole bunch of little things. I mean, we already mentioned the bumper. It all adds, you know, the, this is probably, this bracket, it's all quarter inch where his is factory stamped. Um, he doesn't have a front sway bar. I mean, that front truss is three layers thick and the top part of the truss is half inch. <laughs> like, when you start to add all these little things up, it really does make a giant difference as we've seen here today. Um, I mean, this rig should be, it should be 300 pounds at least less than Kelly's, but when you add all these little things up, it makes a big difference. You know, this plate here, I use these to cover body damage. That's a chunk of steel on each side. Um, he has no armor up here. You know, it all definitely adds up. Um, the rear is super light, but it could be lighter if I was just using a normal Ford 9-inch. I bent my original Ford 9-inch housing, which is why I decided to build this one from scratch and make it so beefy so I didn't bend another one. But um, yeah, it all adds. And then. Um, if you guys saw my TJ stretch series, you know that I built a really big series of brackets that all bolt on and off down here. This is 3 8 plate. There's huge chunks of 3 8 down there. So I could take these lower links and um, actually the lower and upper links are all bolted into a system that I designed to give me the best possible um, angles and the be most amount of space for my uh, front axle and everything. So it all adds up. That's that's what I'm saying. And <laughs> We're, uh, we're both still scratching our heads like, holy crap, it was definitely a very surprising number. But this is why I like doing real world tests so it's not speculative. We can see exactly what the differences are. Well, as you guys can see, sometimes a guess is not as accurate as we'd all like to think. We've got lots of experience in this industry. Well, Kelly, he actually guessed super close because yeah. he used actual math. But <laughs> I think most of us either over or under exaggerate a lot of these numbers when it comes to horsepower. We're guys. We like to over or under exaggerate things oh, when sure. they're in our favor when it comes to horsepower, weight, all that stuff. And I know Kelly's happy. I'm happy with my number. I, I would have assumed yeah, yours would be a boat, man. I all that it, steel, but it, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> they're both really lightweight rigs. For a vehicle on 40s to be under 5,000 pounds is insane. So we're both well under 5,000 and we both have ways that we can continue to lighten things up. And I really believe that being lightweight gives you a huge advantage off road. So these are things to consider when you're taking that four door JK, you know, up to that 6,000 pound mark that if you can lighten the weight, you will notice a huge difference in performance. So anyway, make sure you check out Kelly's uh, YouTube channel, which is? Muddy Beards 4x4. 
Muddy Beards 4x4. Yep. If you guys are familiar with my channel, then you already know about him. I bring him on all the time, but yeah. <laughs> he's one of the few YouTubers that lives near me. But anyway, if you guys liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe. Um, I've got a whole bunch of how-to content on here, and then I do just fun stuff like this every once in a while. And if you want to help support the channel, you can go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, stuff like that. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.